dead anthropologist late at night with your host Johnny Stewart. Tonight on the show, two dead anthropologists talk about their theories of unilinear cultural evolution. Sir Edward Burnett Tyler and Lewis Henry Morgan. Both of you anthropologists came up with similar theories to explain the diversity of cultures around the world. Sir Edward, why don't we begin with yours? Both Lewis and I arrived at our theories based on ideas from the Enlightenment, including Darwin's theory of evolution in works of philosophers like John Locke and Immanuel Kant. Your book, Primitive Culture, contains the much-quoted definition of culture. What was the world like when you published Primitive Culture? In 1871? You know, Johnny, I was at Oxford. At that time, Britain was involved in imperialistic expansion all over the world. I had friends and contacts, travelers, traders, missionaries, and so on, who had traveled all over. They gave me access to their observations of so-called primitive cultures. Why the air quotes? People of that era were very ethnocentric. They thought that British society was the pinnacle of cultural evolution, the culture that all other societies were evolving toward. I see. Tell me more about your theory. What is unilinear cultural evolution? Well, the major question anthropologists like Morgan and I were addressing was, why are societies at similar or different levels of evolution and development? People today still ask that. Right. My explanation for it was my theory of unilinear cultural evolution. Unilinear evolution is the view that societies evolve in a single direction toward complexity, progress, and civilization. And you use the descriptions of nine Western cultures, given to you by Western travelers, to formulate your theory. Exactly. I organized those societies based on things like technology, family, economy, political organization, art religion and philosophy. Then I sorted them into three main stages, beginning with savagery, then barbarism, then civilization. Why did you use terms like savagery and barbarism? Because most people during that time felt that hunter-gatherers and other non-Western societies were living in a lower level of existence than civilized people in Europe and the United States. Seriously? Indeed. We also believed that these so-called primitive societies would eventually become civilized, but only with help from Europeans. You also had a theory of unilinear cultural evolution, Lewis Henry Morgan. How is yours different from Tyler's? It wasn't much different, Johnny. I just arrived at it from a different focus. I was a lawyer in upstate New York, and was fascinated with the local Native Americans. The Iroquois? Yes. I was particularly fascinated with their kinship systems and how very different they were from those of European societies. How were they different? In the Iroquois kinship system, you distinguish between relatives on your mother's side of the family and those on your father's side, and merge father with father's brother and mother with mother's sister. Accordingly, father's brother's children and mother's sister's children, who are your parallel cousins, are merged with brother and sister. It sounds complicated. It is, if you're used to the European system. I also got money from the Smithsonian to distribute questionnaires to travelers and missionaries, to collect information about many other non-Western societies. You did some first-hand fieldwork, but you also collected second-hand information? Yes, that's correct. From the kinship and family information I gathered, I began to conceive of the evolution of the family in a worldwide sense. The family? Yes. I speculated that humans originally lived in primitive hordes, in which sexual behavior was not regulated and individuals didn't know who their fathers were. How did you come to this conclusion? It was based on the fact that some kinship systems, such as the Hawaiian, use only one term to refer to father and all male relatives in the father's generation. I postulated that, then brother-sister marriage developed, followed by group marriage, and eventually by a matriarchal family structure in which women held all the economic and political power. What was the final form? Patriarchy, of course. At some point, males took over the economic and political power, 
And that is what we have today. So far, it doesn't really sound very much like my system. I did look at other cultural elements similar to yours, including political systems, art, technology and religion. I compiled my evidence in my 1877 book, Ancient Society. My theory parallels yours. Dr. Tyler, in the three stages of cultural evolution, savagery, barbarism, and civilization. However, for me, a critical distinction between earlier societies and civilization is private property. Private property? Yes. In savagery, for example, all property is held communally, whereas in civilized societies, people have private property. I'll tell you what I think. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the future, it's Lieutenant Arula. I think your views are ethnocentric, contradictory, and speculative. Ouch. Well, yeah, okay. I'm only just getting started. Your evidence is second-hand, based on the accounts of biased Europeans. The unilineal scheme of evolution is much too simplistic to account for the development of different societies. For example, what if a society has domesticated plants and animals, but not the bow and arrow? Your views are racist and unscientific. Do they have any redeeming qualities? They did provide the first systematic methods for thinking about and explaining the similarities and diversity of human societies. But that's all I can think of. Um, well, that's all for the show tonight. Join us again next time when we another riveting conversation with dead anthropologists.